the class, it is Isabella. Most of you have met me before. I teach Sundays from nine till three. Today, Young Hung and I have prepared an online class for you to keep busy and think about art until the art studio opens. Today, we are teaching the first four out of the seven elements of art. Lesson two will focus on the last three. Today, we are learning line, shape, form, and space. Before we begin, I want to let everyone know that these seven elements of art are essential for any artist at any level. So even if you're one of our youngest students or our most experienced, learning and relearning the elements of art will not only strengthen your artistic knowledge, but it will also improve your technique, which strengthens your ability as an artist. Let us begin. Line. We start with the element of lines. The definition of a line is a mark that shows the distance between two points. A line has width, length, direction, so where is it going, is curved or straight, abstract, and somewhere in between. I've included a line drawing by Pablo Picasso. These several line drawings are extremely helpful because they show how a complex subject, that is the bison, can be represented with only a few very simple lines. Further, line drawings can have several lines, such as the ones you see in the middle row, but also can have very few lines, such as the image on the left. But in each drawing, you can clearly see Pablo Picasso's thinking and his representation of the bison. I've included one more example of a line drawing by a professional artist. This drawing is a complex line drawing because even though it looks simple, it is very difficult to catch. Each line is very deliberate because the entire subject is represented by only a few lines. Also, it is important to see that the artist has included quite a lot of detail in the image, even only using a few lines. You can see this in the dog's paw, his eye, his nose, his snout, and ears. I challenge you to draw this dog using only a few lines. It looks simple, but it requires a lot of technique. These images are easier to catch since they're showing fairly simple shapes using lines. You can draw images from using lines using only a simple couple lines. Start with a simple subject such as flowers or outlines of a cat, dog, rabbit, etc. I encourage you to do this at home. Just as a heads up, you will have homework at the end of this lesson, so do not spend a lot of time on this. The next element we move on to is shape. Shapes are two-dimensional closed areas. I will show you by how you can start with each artistic drawing using only a shape. You start with a 2D area of a square, for example, a rectangle, a triangle, etc. I will always tell the more advanced students to start with the shape before they go into drawing the structure of an object. This is also true for younger students. We always think about how we will draw something by starting with its basic shapes. Just quickly, I'm including a famous painting from the Cubism art period that started in the early 20th century. One of my personal favorite art periods, the artist created beautiful artworks using very bold shapes that convey complex feelings and emotions. I encourage you to research some artists of cubism. Younger students, ask your parents first. Here are two students' artwork represented who, that represent complicated subjects using very simple shapes. The first image on the left shows the student using three shapes to paint the fire truck. You can see that the student used two rectangles two circles, and smaller shapes to represent the windows and the ladder. As you, 
On the right, we can see more abstract shapes for the leaves on the apple tree with a clear rectangle for the trunk. This, is, this image on the left is very interesting. Here the student cut shapes and scrap of paper to create a complicated image. The dragon and the girl are made entirely of scrapbook paper that the student meticulously cut out and put on their paper. On the right, we see how simple shapes, such as a triangle in the flowers, create a beautiful bouquet. This is also seen in the abstract vase. Great work, students. Now I talk about form. Form is the next step after shape. If shape is 2D, form is 3D. By understanding form, we take 2D images and create 3D objects. Remember when I started with a square, rectangle, and triangle. By adding a few simple lines, we can make these shapes into 3D structures. By mastering form, artists draw on a flat surface to show real life. The easiest way to think of form in artwork is through structure sketches. Structure sketches teach artists to think about objects as their most basic form. By understanding the form and how to think about basic objects in form, artists can draw just about anything. On the left, you see an example of a structure sketch by one of our students. Here you see the artist demonstrates many common household objects by just drawing the form. On the right, we have a clay model sculpture completed by one of our students just a week ago. It is important to remember that art is not just painting or drawing on flat surfaces. Art is much more. For sculptors such as Young Hung herself, form is essential not only to represent their idea, but also to ensure that the sculpture can exist such that it doesn't fall over. The final element we will talk about today is space. Space is complicated, but to think of it simply is to think about where things are in the artwork. Everyone needs to use space in artwork, but it's hard to master. Younger students always use space when they think about decisions on where to put their main character or when they are drawing the background using layers. But when advanced students and professional artists think of space, they can think of it in many different ways, such as through composition and perspective. Here I have included two professional artworks. The first one on the left is a famous American painter. This artwork shows space in several ways but in the most obvious ways in how he shows the emptiness of the background. The main character, the young woman, is in an empty field. The second painting shows in many layers. They show things that are far away, such as the island in the water. The artist also shows that some people are closer than others by how he organized the space in the painting. Here, students did the same thing as the professional artists above. They learned how to organize the space of the artwork through the stairs design and the, and the environmental design. For the image on the right, we see how the first step is wider than the last step and disappears towards the vantage point. The, the artist organizes space by showing direction and the perspective of the stairs. Homework. Students, before you, the beginning of the next online lesson, I want you to email me one or two pictures of your home that shows at least one of the art elements we talked about. I will grade your homework and send it back to you. For our students who are eight years old and older, I want you to include a written description of your photo. It can be included in the body of the email or as a Word document. I have included an example. My thinking for this picture is to represent the first element we talked about. Do you remember? Lines. 
I took the picture of the contents in my bathroom because I saw how they showed lines coming from the bottom of the cup they were in. Of course, this picture shows more art elements, so it, this is why I want you to explain why you chose what you did. Thank you, everyone. Look out for Lesson 2, which will be posted next weekend. I'm excited to see your homework.